thank you for invi inviting us to Claren Coffee. I am Marin, Marin Locke from, from the Estonian Literary Museum and the Center of Excellence in Estonian Studies, where I work as a senior researcher. My background is uh, literary studies, especially 20th century literary history. We have, I have been the project leader of three digital web projects based on archival sources. So my, re my research has related to, to digital humanities more than 20 years, but uh, today's paper here uh, in Claring Cafe is the first attempt to use language resources in solving the re research questions faced by literary scholars. So I'm very curious to do this work. Olga. I'm Olga Kipsimenka and I work at the Center of Estonian Language Resources as a user involvement specialist and language resource tester. And we as a team uh, from the Center of Estonian Language Resources outsourced to the Estonian Literary Museum in 2017 and started our collaboration project to create literary corpora. We know there are two morphologically tagged corpora being available online, the Writer's Correspondence Corpus that we are going to present to you today and the Corpus of Estonian Literary Criticism of the beginning of the 20th century. Also, the next correspondence corpus is being prepared. The source of our first correspondence corpus is three decades of letters between writers Johannes Barbarus and Johannes Semper, who have been classmates and lifelong friends. This corpus has implied an extensive manual work with metadata, for instance, standardizing dates of the letters, which are mostly marked by the phrases like on the Christmas Eve 1937, before April 7th, and so on. The corpus texts were automatically morphologically tagged and disambiguated, and now the automatic analysis is being manually controlled. And I can add from my side uh, that at the same time with the corpus creation process, correspondence was prepared for publishing in textual critical edition in print in two volumes. The correspondence is thematically very rich. Here we can find all the main issues of literary and cultural life in Estonia, but also in Europe during the long period between the wars. Uh, we can see how strongly political and societal context influences the attitudes and finally the fates of the writers. Both of them spent a lot of time in, in Europe, so we could say that Europe became the, the second home for them. The type of corpus of correspondence is available online in the Estonian version of Corp query system that was created by the Swedish Language Bank and is used in several countries for corpus representation and research. The correspondence corpus allows to search in sentences and paragraphs, which were quite lengthy in the writer's letters, and the queries can be made and statistics can be compiled using all the data tagged in the corpus. And uh, from a quickly compiled table represented here, uh, from the relative frequency in bold and absolute frequency in brackets of the author's words written on seven years, you can see at a glance who of them is the most talkative in the letters and who is the last careful to mark the date. Uh, the corpus of literary correspondence in Corp has, has been the challenge for me as a literary uh, scholar. Uh, what kind of research questions could we pose? and how this kind of language resource can help us to solve them. The corpus uh, give us an advantage of retrieving exact language units and tagged information from the massive uh, textual data. And it guides us to rethink the relevant research questions uh, to corp. And to demonstrate the possibilities of corp to you at the Clarin Coffee here, we have chosen to explore European relations uh, that also authors uh, mention in the correspondence. Why? Because both of them debu debuted in literary movement Young Estonia. The slogan or call of the movement was let us, let us be Estonians, but let us also, also be, become Europeans. And it has aimed to develop relations with European literature. And here, the next slide, uh, here you can see some main aspects of Johannes Semper's, Semper's biography. Semper was an extremely occupied person, but I would like to point out that he was a Francophile and a translator, and for 12, 12 years, the head of the Estonian Pen Club. And uh, we can suppose that this fact 
uh, gave him an opportunity to develop literary relations with Europe uh, on an institutional level. And in the next slide, uh, you can see some main aspects of Johannes Barbarus' bi biography. He also, also had many interests, but his main occupation was, was a Pernod City physician during the wars. Like his friend, he also was a Francophile. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Johannes Semper and Johannes Barbarus were both the young Estonians who became become real Europeans during the years of Estonian Republic in 1920s and 40s. And our main hypothesis is that the participation in the Worldwide International Pen Association has strongly influenced uh, not national but European identity of the authors. And our research questions are the issues of the International Pen Club, uh, pen activity that are represented in the correspondence. So to retrieve from the corpus pen activities combined with formal and informal relations, we decided to best base our queries on pen mentions and proper names in the letters. To look for pen club, pen congress, whatever pen house mentions, along with the names of people and places, we used an extended search query that looked for a proper name that is followed by a word beginning with pen, case insensitive, and we had to filter out Estonian lemmas, such as penny, meaning female dog, and penny nukit, which means canine figures that were mentioned in the corpus as poetic name of the poetry collection. Proper nouns and pen mentions could be adjacent with uh, zero words in between, or divided by one to ten random words in the same paragraph. We repeated the search, changing the word order to capture instances where proper nouns are mentioned after pen mentions as well. And uh, we have seen that the variation of the pen mentions in the private letter corpus is extensive, as you can see from the table and from a small English uh, summary here. Um, the text is unedited, so that there are differences in capitalization and compound words orthography. Still, Corp query allows us to capture all the instances of this word part pen and also to include the similar, exclude the similar words coming up in the search. And some results. We find out an historical fact that the Estonian Pen Club established in December in, in 1927 uh, uh, by initiative Johannes Semper, who was leading it up to closing in 1940 by Soviet regime. Uh, correspondents discuss many subjects and issues of the International Pen, pen year, Yearly Congresses, for example, the participation uh, at the Congresses. Uh, the corpus, mm, the corpus res, uh, search results show that the main pen activities represented, uh, represented in the correspondence are publishing, uh, publishing special proceedings and bulletin, organizing collections of sh short stories, meet, meeting and literary presentations twice a year where writers from Europe were invited. Uh, issues. In uh, relation to pen activities, authors have discussed travel, uh, discussed uh, first one, travel organization, clothing during pen congresses, hikes at the end of congresses, and private vacations combined with congress travel. Uh, in conclusion, Events in Europe uh, have a strong impact on writers' works and the personal level between the wars. And, uh, and second, the ideology, the ideology, ideology uh, of the pen inter international pen has been the community spirit of writers and culture people, but in the uh, in 1930s, it runs contradict to the German policy of European, European invasion that starts to emphasize nationality and ethnicity. The literary resources have been massively digitized in Estonia, but are mostly used by the literary scholars 
for close reading of text and not for queries in the massive textual data. But our small-scale research trial shows that to test the hypothesis against textual data, we only needed two main and two auxiliary queries in Corp. We also controlled paragraphs with pen without proper names and paragraphs containing congress words. And it did not require a deep linguistic knowledge, um, although using lemmas was helpful. Um, one of the core benefits is that the queries made can easily be reproduced simply by copy-pasting the link from the browser address bar. And another benefit is the possibility to represent the queries in the research papers in forms of regular expressions that are generated automatically in the corpus query processor in the extended search tab. Um, we have um, encountered a lot of OK, but how uh, questions um, while doing this corpus and using this corpus. And uh, as we are beginners in using the literary corpora, we are welcoming more OK, but how questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Olga and Maureen, for, for this, uh, this this presentation. I, I can just um, add a quick comment that uh, it's also it's important that it shows us not only that we can bring our own disciplinary questions to the tools, but also the tools can enable some other questions. So in this case, we can uh, um, we can gather uh, the the vast amount of, of sources and try to uh, to basically search for whatever clues we need for whatever. Um, the subject um, you know, of interest with regards to what this corpus represents. So that's uh, really uh, powerful. Mm -hmm.